we now can go to the discussion uh, item number 10, which is the East Downtown Pedestrian <laughs> Realm topic. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, John Murchis, our Director of Traffic and Parking Services, will make this presentation. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Council Members. Um, today I have a presentation that overviews the Council letter and the um, attachments that are included in that uh, for us today. Um, I guess first to start out, um, um, what are we really talking about when we change or how does the pedestrian realm really change in the city? Um, first of all, either we, the public, do it uh, through uh, our reconstruction of, of projects is, is a major way where uh, uh, our public realm is changed. Second of all, um, also private development can impact uh, how we change our public realm. Um, both of those uh, need to be focused and consistent with what our long-term goals and, and strategies and, and visions are. Um, relative to public realm, uh, we've uh, cited some goals and purpose and benefits. I'm not gonna uh, touch on all of these. These are stated in the letter, but on an overview, a livable, walkable, um, uh, spaces around the city uh, focused on creating an urban environment that supports our um, our uh, placemaking um, in in and around the city and then likewise really looking at um, the benefits um, not only from the pedestrian experience but also they can also enhance our safety uh, support the adjacent developments as well as uh, transform underutilized space um, with that, we decided to um, embark on some uh, uh, pedestrian realm study work. Uh, first of all, uh, why in the east downtown area? Um, numerous changes are occurring in the downtown. Uh, um, I think uh, Council is aware of most of those, but for our public, we've got the Wells Fargo development, we've got the stadium, we've got the commons, those are all underway. Likewise, we've heard of other new developments that are uh, on the planning or proposed stand uh, stage. Um, Green Line has transformed um, downtown with some changes in bus uh, transit, as well as um, there are changes in non-motorized as well as motorized traffic in the east downtown area. Uh, based on a lot of that uh, previous work, uh, Public Works examined uh, the street needs in this area related to traffic flow. and and determined that some streets could be narrowed, some can be changed or modified or enhanced, as well as some of them are best uh, staying the same as they are today. Um, so with that, we uh, have taken two steps in, in moving towards some vision work here. Uh, the first step was to develop some concepts, and the second was to draft up the long-term vision. And I'll talk about those two documents uh, here next. Um, we first started um, in defining a, a area uh, bounded basically by Washington Avenue on the north, uh, 6th Street on the south, 5th Avenue on the west, and Chicago Avenue on the east. These are uh, approximately, there are 12 blocks in this area. Um, the center six blocks are uh, in flux right now with the development, the commons, and the LRT <coughs> plaza um, in that regards. Um, that's kind of the context of the location. We looked at each of those streets in that area and initially developed some concepts. This is one um, snapshot of a concept in the, in the development stage where we tried to identify and note what and how things could change. These are, are just concepts and ideas. Um, these weren't recommendations at this stage. Um, trying to understand what would be the possibilities um, block by block in, in this area. There are a set of probably about 20 of these um, different vignettes um, like this for each of the various streets in our study area. Likewise, we attempted in the concept development to try to illustrate what are some of the potentials uh, out, of the, out of the study work. Um, First, this one kind of illustrates uh, the benefits and potential ideas on how might bump outs in, in and of themselves might create a better intersection uh, related to both uh, pedestrian uh, travel flow as well as uh, bicycle use. And then we also uh, presented a number of perspectives and uh, looks at um, 
these streets in a way that can help people understand in a visual manner um, how space can change along a street. And we purposely presented both the foreground before Third Street and the far side of Third Street in two different manners. Um, and I'll briefly describe uh, those for you. Uh, on going from left to right on the image, we've got the sidewalk, we got the boulevard in both blocks before and after Third Street. Um, parking stays the same. And then we have two parallel uh, through lanes uh, next to that. But on the right-hand side of the graphic, on the near side, we show a, a buffered bike lane followed by parking and then the boulevard and sidewalk. But on the far side, as a, as a different way to present and, and address space use, um, the bike lane has become a protected bike lane behind the curb, the parking has disappeared, and the pedestrian space has expanded. And so this kind of gives uh, people some understanding of, of some of the options. Um, this isn't a recommendation, but some of the options on how space could be used in the, uh, in the area. And so that was the intent of, of the concept development um, project. The next step was really to look at a draft uh, long-term vision. And, and we have uh, then, based on that concept work, tried to identify cohesive, consistent approaches to each of the seven streets that are in this study area. And I'll talk about those seven streets in particular here in a moment. But wanted to highlight that uh, really we're trying to guide all stakeholders in how we move forward. Um, the city and the county currently do not have eminent projects on any of these streets. So changes in this area are really going to be accomplished through um, others, private development, et cetera, and that we need to be um, coordinating and being consistent with how we're proceeding. So I've got a series of, of graphics here to kind of highlight um, the draft vision that is being proposed here um, in that regards. Um, and I'll touch on kind of what has kind of changed with each street as we have it presented. Um, starting with Fifth Avenue, um, we're kind of basically retaining the street pretty much the way it is, adding curb, curb extensions and bump outs, some pedestrian area potential next to the Hoff and, and gateway ramps, and then adding a buffer to the bike lane. <coughs> On Portland Avenue, um, there's more potential for change. Um, we think we can reduce the travel lanes from two, from three today down to two through lanes. Um, today, the first block, the northerly block, is already two through lanes, but then from third to six, we think we can reduce from three to two. Um, with that, we think we can add a protected bike facility, um, and then we can remove parking in the one block for the common section um, next, uh, which is between the 4th and 5th Street blocks, and then add curb extensions and bump outs where, um, where we can and, and retain the mid-block parking. Then jumping over to Park Avenue, um, in a similar manner, um, we are um, uh, making some changes there, retaining three northbound lanes along this segment from 6th up to 4th Street. At that point, we drop one of the uh, travel lanes as a right turn lane onto 4th Street. Um, we're going to allow parking on the right hand side because those three travel lanes are needed during peak periods. Um, and so we can allow parking in the off peak period. We can provide a protected bike facility along the right hand side. We're going to retain two through lanes on the northerly two blocks um, between 4th and Washington and accommodate the turns that need to occur at 3rd and in Washington as well. And then um, like the Portland segment, uh, removing um, the parking adjacent to the Commons block um, and then adding um, where we can curb extensions uh, while retaining the mid, mid block parking. Along Chicago, I've broken this segment up into two segments here. The first slide here shows the northerly two blocks um, with the bullet points at the bottom. The first one retaining travel lanes in each direction with parking on each side. Pretty much what we have there today. However, there's opportunity to slim up the street a little bit um, in that regards. Um, we're adding a second, uh, adding a southbound left turn lane that doesn't exist today from from Chicago to 4th Street. And then likewise, uh, planning for future um, east-west pedestrian promenade and plaza like we have between Washington and the 2nd uh, Street uh, 
to and from the river um, north of this study area. On the couple blocks to the south of those on Chicago next to the stadium, uh, it pretty much retains the, the cross section planned with the stadium, uh, one traveling in each direction with the east side parking bay. Um, a new pedestrian crossing uh, near the 5th Street uh, intersection. And then, um, as I just mentioned, modifying um, the southerly leg or um, of the intersection to uh, work with um, the, uh, the new left turn lane at 4th Street. Then looking at the east-west streets, um, this is 3rd Street. Um, this pretty much stays the same with uh, retaining the basic cross section that we have out there today um, and then adding curb extensions and bump outs while retaining the mid block uh, parking. On 4th Street, we do have a major change um, with discussions with Metro Transit in relationship to the changes in bus traffic along 4th Street um, in this reverse flow lane. We can remove the uh, Metro Transit has agreed to remove the bus lane from Norma Grew, um, just off to the image on the right uh, for the uh, these three blocks here up to up to Fifth Avenue. So we are able to repurpose that uh, uh, transit lane and uh, make that uh, parking adjacent to the northerly edge of 4th Street. Um, it allows us to add a buffer to the bike lane as well. Um, we still are able to retain the existing three through lanes that are out there and then add mid-block parking and curb extensions on the south side um, next to the Commons and the LRT station. And then um, moving off to 5th Street, our last street um, here, we uh, would retain the uh, left-hand lane, um, through lane that exists today. There is a lane on each side of the LRT tracks in this location. So we'd retain the left-hand one, or which is southerly uh, on this graphic, um, and then convert the right-hand one to uh, either a two-way bikeway or a pedestrian space um, in that regard. So our recommendations today are to receive and file both the study work of the concepts as well as our draft um, uh, long-term vision and then uh, return to council uh, for approvals of that vision. Um, in the interim, we would be uh, doing some further outreach um, with our, our stakeholders, getting that uh, public input, uh, coming back to council, and then uh, when we come back to council, we'll also be bringing forth some considerations for how we might implement um, some of this work uh, um, with our partners. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, that's my presentation. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, any questions, Councilmember Glidden? Thank you, um, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Wirtschus. I know that this is a tremendous project to think about um, just this piece, which I know Public Works is involved in many other pieces, kind of thinking about um, east end of downtown and um, how we accommodate and partner with all the changes that are happening. I will say there's just there's a lot packed in here so I don't know that I feel um, versed enough to ask very many questions about kind of what all is packed in here but because um, this is my first time to, to get the information. Um, but can I first just get a little bit more from you on your thoughts on the next steps? Is there a um, preferred timeline for coming back to council? Uh, because that may guide what can happen in the interim. Sure, uh, Mr. Chair and Council Member Glidden. Um, preferred timeline um, is really dependent upon how well and how quickly we can get feedback from the, the stakeholders. I've, I've already got a list of over 20 organizations or individuals that I'm be communicating this out to to make sure that they um, can give us proper feedback. Some have given us feedback on the study work already um, with that. And so um, in an ideal world, it would happen real quickly and we could be here next cycle. I'm, I'm not that optimistic in that regards. And so, um, but we wanna give um, all entities uh, proper time. In, in that, but you're thinking this year? 
Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so um, I'm just trying to get oh, a, a general time frame of are you thinking the fall or what uh, are you anticipating? I, I'm thinking more in the context of maybe later in May um, in that oh, regard. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so um, then that is coming forward quite quickly. Quick, Quite quickly. I call that quite quickly, yeah, I guess. No, I, I, I don't mean to put words in your mouth or in others, but... Um, I, I would agree it is quite quickly. Um, and, and maybe you can tell us a little bit of the context around and that. The, and, and that's where I was heading with this. Okay. Um, you know, Ryan is continuing to move forward and and work will be done um, later this year with um, space, I'm gonna say basically from building frontage to the curb. And so um, we want to try to zero in on, on a vision and at a high level that would suggest we're all can then uh, work forward in trying to implement um, what we're hoping to intend to implement. Um, by all means, um, these documents are not intended to get into the minutia of, of detail, and I'll pick on one of those, where are the pedestrian curb ramps you know, and stuff like that. That's not the intention, and so those will come as design and projects are built. But do we have um, some vision out there about where people intend to uh, move forward with that? Um, okay. and so I'm trying to... Um, um, focus people on the, the the seven streets and the vision and and, and land feedback on that because I do realize there's a lot of information here. Okay, and and again, there's um, I can get there's a level of detail you're trying to stay stay out of, but there's still some major decisions yep. within here. I'll just pick out one because I I like it actually, but um, you mentioned in 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 this uh, big packet of suggestions a uh, bike lane on Third Avenue. And there isn't a, a bike lane, formal bike lane there today. Um, and so I'm assuming that that's a concept that you're exploring is a bike lane on Third Avenue. Um, or did uh, I mistake that with Third Street? Mr. Mr. Chair and Councilmember, we're at Third Street. Um, oh, okay. Our study area stops in this area at Fifth Avenue, so it doesn't go over to Third Avenue oh. right outside here of City Hall. Okay. Um, and for but the, putting a new bike, okay. But, All right. But we are proposing changes here um, mm -hmm. for how things might lay out in a particular street. Okay, all right. Well, um, and I know you're still yet to go to some of our committees within the city that give input on these plans. Um, was there anything else you wanted to share with how you came up with your proposed long-term vision um, that helps us understand how that came about? Um, um. Mr. Chair and Councilmember Glidden, I, I think the the in in looking at the context of the of the first part of the concept development, um, we really focused on um, besides where the travel lanes could be changed or not changed, where are the um, quick win opportunities um, that really uh, result in how the um, I'll say the curb space is really applied um, in, in the context of parking, no parking, bump out um, or not, um, travel rain reductions, and then how do we want to treat um, bike facilities in, in this general area are probably the, the focus of the effort. Um, and um, I think that's kind of the, the context, and so the, the first study work um, leads us to something, realizing that um, we did, I fully expect that we didn't touch on everything that people have interest in in the in the draft vision here and but we need to put something on paper that then um, begins that conversation and and people can dialogue um, and provide their input on that okay um, I'm just trying to think what um, there's just like I apologize, but there's just a, a lot in here, and uh, I do appreciate that you've put this before us so we can um, start. So are you also thinking about testing some new concepts here? Because um, when I look, for example, at the bird's eye view of Portland Avenue, um, uh, where you have this uh, nice diagram that shows um, kind of multiple treatments, um, one of them being kind of an extension of sidewalk that ends up being a bike lane, or that's what mm -hmm. it looks like here. Mm -hmm. That would be sort of a new new treatment. And so is this also an opportunity to, to think about how those new treatments might fit in? Um, or are you just trying to test multiple ideas here and see what feedback you get as you go through this uh, process from now until 
sometime in May. Uh, Mr. Chair and Councilmember Glidden, I, I would say from a, a basic level, um, our Access Minneapolis plan um, at a minimum level says we should approach how we deal with intersections by allowing for um, better pedestrian treatments, including mm -hmm. bump outs, okay? So that's kind of a, a base condition. And then as we look at the other uses of the street, travel lanes, parking lanes, and bike facilities, the question is which um, attributes do we want to include on each particular street and those um, attributes or dynamics change block face, let alone block by block. Um, and so how can we uh, put forth a, a a reasonable document here that begins a conversation about what's the best treatment for that curb space use um, in that regards. And it's a, it's a mixed bag of, of answers. Um, I would say that it, it isn't um, a, an ex experiment per se of just sampling of things. I would intend that we tried to coalesce this into some consistent logical coordination block by block in addition to um, um, trying to maximize um, space for a variety of users on the on the street corridor, ped, bike, et cetera. Thank you. And I will concur that this is a very uh, accelerated timeline. So. Yeah. <laughs> Councilmember Gordon. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate uh, get, getting to look at this. I did try to open up some of the other files that are online that has more um, illustrations and there's a lot that I'm interested in here. I did want to um, make sure that I understood you were saying that there would no longer be that counterflow uh, bus lane on 4th that will be gone and that uh, is that correct? That is correct. And that for, means for I'll, I'll caveat that for a portion of the street a 4th street up to 5th Avenue. So from the easterly end over by the stadium Norma grew for or several blocks up to Fifth Avenue. From Fifth Avenue westerly into downtown past City Hall and to Hennepin, the reverse flow bus lane at this stage is continuing. Um, and I guess that um, I don't quite understand why if, it, if, if we can change it, uh, the other part of fourth, why it has to come back here. So that, that would be something I'd say, well, let's look at that because um, that would mean any opportunity that gets opened up um, would just add to more confusion if all of a sudden, if there was a bike lane that moved, for example, to the right side or a protected bikeway, um, and then all of a sudden it disappeared and we sent the bike path back into the middle of the, <coughs> the street for that stretch. So hopefully there's some room. In fact, that's maybe sort of a, a, a whole issue with this, just looking at this isolated portion of the city and say, what are we going to do here? Um, it's difficult to do that without understanding how that's actually going to then um, harmoniously uh, connect to the rest of the infrastructure in the rest of the city. Um, so that's something to look at and it's um, hard to understand when you look at this plan and there are changes that are going to be made here but might not be made elsewhere. So we have to keep that in mind because there's something that there's things that might be fantastic here. Um, if they were going to be continued. So if you're on a protected bikeway and you're moving down fourth and all of a sudden they have that end and you're, you have nowhere to go, um, wouldn't make much sense necessarily. So that's something to think about. Um, I, I agree, I guess, with um, Council Member Glidden. This is a lot to, to figure out and to take in and to understand. Um, and, and we may need more time and also more uh, assistance having other people look at this. So. Uh, see what our pedestrian advisory committee thinks, what our bicycle advisory committee thinks, what's going to happen. It's a very complicated area. Uh, there's problems right now with bikes. Um, I'd be very interested to see what we're going to do to help the, the bikes that are heading down fourth actually get over to the Hiawatha Trail there by the stadium. Right now, the way it's set up, you cross tracks twice. It's very confusing. I've often wondered when you're coming off the Hiawatha Protected Bikeway Trail and you come down third, why you can't just have a two-way protected bikeway leading you all the way uh, into downtown. So I see this as, oh, this might be an opportunity to actually do that. Um, one question I did want to ask, though, and we'll kind of leave those comments aside for now just so you don't have to respond to every little thing. But I'm particularly curious about the treatments of park 
in Portland when they're going through the commons. Park especially, because it seems like it's not actually much of a thoroughfare. It goes through the commons and then it ends at Washington, I believe. Um, was there any <laughs> discussion or thoughts of, um, of, of eliminating the curb, curving the road, having another treatment so as to make that feel more like a plaza, a pedestrian area, so that the cars would clearly feel like they were kind of second class when they got to go through that passageway. Um, there's an area actually in the second ward near the, um, in the arts quarter on the West Bank where the university has a parking ramp and then there's an art uh, building right across the street and the city worked with them to kind of create this feel. I think it's even a brick street. So they've even done a different treatment there. I'm just wondering if, if there were any considerations to, to maybe change park during that stretch even more dramatically than it's indicated on the bird's eye view that I think about. Um, Mr. Chair and Councilmember Gordon, um, a, a good example of kind of where our thinking um, um, is at at this stage. Um, a lot of the suggestions and thoughts that you had are in the, um, I'll call it devil in the detail level of effort. Our, our higher level uh, discussion at this stage and, and presentation of the, the vision is one of how can we shrink or repurpose some space. Um, there is opportunity to discuss how that space is aligned within the right of way, but in, in the portion of Park Avenue next to the Commons, we concluded that um, we can get to two lanes for most of the day except for peak hours and so we need that third lane and so that's why on the right hand side we have a third lane that can be used for parking off peak but otherwise parking out there can be removed that's out there today and so the sh street can shrink. Um, that's the level of effort and discussion that's being presented today. Um, there is not any further dialogue about how and how the space back of the curb would be repurposed um, in, if, except for we want to accommodate a bike, bike facility through that area um, in the right hand side. So there's opportunity for further dialogue and input on those very subjects and that's why we're asking for input as well. The one thing it looked like for park also is that it we took out a lane while it went through the commons and then as soon as you get out of the commons for that last block, we added the, the lanes back. Is that true? Um, not correctly. Um, I, and I can get into detail with that if you'd like right now. Otherwise, I could sit down with you individually. But um, basically, we're saying up to 4th Street, um, we need to retain the three through travel lanes um, with parking in the right-hand side off peak. Um, for the last two blocks, we can um, um, handle the traffic with two through lanes. Uh, we need some turn lanes at a couple of intersections, one at 3rd Street uh, for a left turn, and then up at Washington, we need to accommodate the turns onto Washington left through and right. And so um, it, it does narrow up to two, and then we need to uh, effectively, selectively add uh, turn lanes accordingly. That's, that's what happens. It's kind of small on the graphic, um, and so uh, those are, uh, are uh, things that are in the, in the graphic right now. And that's because we just think there's going to be a pile of cars coming on of third that need to get from third to Washington? That, that um, uh, those cars today exist out there. And, and with the traffic on Washington and the traffic on Third Street crossing with Park Avenue, we're accommodating that traffic and managing it as best we can out there. And, and to maximize space throughout the rest of the block, we can narrow up the rest of the block, but we need to provide turn lanes at the intersection accordingly. Okay, and my over, it looks like the street, the whole street is wider there between 3rd and Washington, um, and it, maybe it's mostly for those turn lanes, but it narrows up nicely when it goes through the commons and, and past the um, new uh, Wells Fargo Tower, but anyway. There's just a lot of details yep. in here, and um, hopefully we can look at it more. Uh, I think uh, if we want to make this more pedestrian friendly, I, we there's probably things we could do that could help uh, encourage cars to um, to not necessarily see that as the, the, the cut through. 
find the way to get there. And my hope is that with some of the improvements we've done on 4th um, to get onto 35W and those things that we're going to actually end up seeing fewer cars needing to get all the way to Washington, for example, at the end of the day rush hour getting out. And I want to make sure we're, we're designing the roads um, for all day um, and taking into consideration those things and we don't just design them for those peak hours in the morning and the, and the afternoon because then I think we end up kind of um, short circuiting the benefits we could have there at lunchtime or during the day or during the <coughs> and all that. So I'll be curious to see how this goes and what more we can do to help uh, help, help improve it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I just want to start by saying I think this is a really helpful approach to take in areas of the city where we expect to see a lot of growth and change. Um, particularly new private development to be really proactive and looking at how our infrastructure might change along with it. Um, it seems like there might be a potential, and you mentioned some examples for a lot of this to be privately funded or be built along with private development. So I think, again, that that's a really helpful approach to make sure our infrastructure is keeping pace with the addition of new people and activities. I don't know if you have any comments about that, but um, I also wanted to just ask, because we're starting to talk about some specific examples um, so just take, for example, the, the commons, if that was funded and if there's maintenance found, you know, for future there, um, and that goes through and is approved, um, you know, how would you use this vision to then it, once a project becomes, you know, Im more imminent, um, how would this vision then guide what I would expect to be more detailed study and design at that point, especially for a bigger change like that? Sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair and Councilmember Bender, um, I'm not um, well versed in the commons, but I'll pick another project that has just kind of come through the, the gate here. Um, I think um, Sherman Associates has announced the kind of their planning project for for that uh, spaghetti factory at Thresher Square block. Um, I've already been contacted by um, the architect of that saying, how can I um, talk with you to understand where you're headed with this? So that when um, the conversation between Sherman, their architect, moves forward and plans are submitted into the city for approvals, that we've sort of maximized the opportunity that we can out here. Um, uh, the proactive approach right now is because we don't have eminent street reconstruction project out here. Is how can we um, use that private infrastructure to and, and change to basically result in better public infrastructure, and it, it will. It will result in probably incremental change throughout this whole area, pending you know those actions by individual property owners who are changing their frontage. But if we if we have property owner A doing one thing and property owner B doing another thing, um, in the end we're going to end up with a quilt. The quilt might look good, but did it all fit together and be coordinated and consistent? And so that's that's kind of the um, place where we're at in trying to foster this forward. Okay, thank you. Well, I mean, to the extent that the details in this, um, you know, would be then implemented, I, I do kind of agree with what's been said here that um, it seems like getting the PAC and the BAC and maybe council members who might have specific questions, getting all that feedback and getting it right um, before we are asked to vote on adopting it seems really important. So I would agree with that statement. For the committee, I, I've had already stopped with the PAC and BAC and gave them kind of a highlights. This is coming through um, and got some feedback already on that. I intend to go back and do more with them along with a whole bunch of other folks who will be uh, interested in this subject matter as well. Any further questions or comments? Um, see none, you know, I just concur that obviously this is an accelerated process, but our motivation for such um, is a good one. I mean, the, the alternative to get the patchwork and then have to rip that up to make something consistent, uh, the cost associated, let alone just the, the poor planning that that would demonstrate on our end, uh, I think we're, we're moving forward in the correct way. However, there are no shortcuts. You can just get there faster. And uh, I think your list of 20 is probably the appropriate list as you're familiar. This isn't your uh, first time around the block, so to speak, with it getting public input. So um, so with that um, encouragement, and I know mackenzie has been involved in this, and we, we do, if anything, the shorthand is, is we want to maximize the pedestrian experience in this new part of our city. Uh, it truly is a new part uh, when all is said and done. So 
Uh, with that, I will move to receive and file both the downtown pedestrian realm uh, augmentation study and the uh, uh, additional long-term vision for the seven streets um, identified in the study area by receiving and filing that as well. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of receiving and filing those items, say aye. 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 Senting nay, that carries. And thank you very much. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>